I don't normally do intros like this, but I'm currently descending hundreds of feet into a cave that runs over five kilometers deep into the earth. Now, whether we like it or not, as soon as my friends and I touch the ground, we are officially stranded here for the next seven days. <sighs> that might have been the scariest thing I've ever done. First things first, we had your rain fall away from when we were pounded out. Why? If it storms, this entire area will collapse. Black. No like an ocean and potentially drown us all. We're swimming on deep into the cave to set up this cave. Bro, this is just we waking. See, this is like a different world. This cave entrance may be beautiful, but looks can be deceiving. We didn't know it yet, but the next seven days will my not be the hardest of our entire lives. If we don't have a camp, we're screwed. Okay. Okay. The that you were going. We're just looking for flat ground to set up camp. Upon entering the mouth of the cave, we stumbled upon an area with high enough elevation to protect us from any flash flooding, meaning that it was perfect for camp. Perfect is a crazy word. Good enough is what I would use. Shut it off for tip. We spent the rest of day one grabbing our supplies that we were dropped with. Each one of these bags weighs like 80 pounds. And as you can see by the footage, we spent around four hours. This was very hard to traverse. Getting all of it back up to our base camp. All right. We got the lights on in here. Our supplies are finally at our home base. And if you point the camera over there, you'll see it's pitch black. It took all day. And so, we set up the bare minimum for camping grounds. We drilled holes to hang up some ropes. Grab these, pull yourself up. Most like the rose from able to support hammocks. And with the help of our survival guide, Joel, we hung our hammocks. This then rope is what holds up my hammock. Yep. Eat some dinner and prepare for a very cold night What? No, I'll go I, This hammock is uh, way more comfortable than I thought it would be. Hey. Oh god, <laughs> why is my hand so big at all? This part of the cave is two and a half kilometers deep, and we're basically camping at the entrance. Tomorrow, we have a lot of exploring. I had you guys sleep. Boy. I don't know. It's a very perplexing environment. The cave's constantly dripping water on us from above, so we put a tarp over us. But even still, the water's dripping into our hammock. I have an idea. Let's make our shelter actually good. I say we connect these tarps so we stay dry while we're sleeping. That's what a genius. I'm not just a YouTuber, okay? My hammock gets out right here. <laughs> Are we serious right now? This is where I just got out of bed. And we didn't realize it at the time, but this hole is almost 40 feet deep. So while Sean and I got started on the super chart, Matt and Carl went to see how dangerous this hole was for themselves. Do you see my hammock up there? That is where I slept. Now look at this. And because everything looks the same, it's probably pretty hard to follow us in this cave. On this map, you can see our home base and how far they're moving away from it. My bag, it's been real, bro. Oh, bro, this is crazy. Our boys are randomly exploring. Me and Sean actually have to work on the camp. Why is there a sleeping bag over here? Uh, because it smells like pee. Well, lesson number one, don't break your sleeping bags. Why did we rent sleeping bags? Why did we not just buy sleeping bags? We're zip tying the tarps together to create one mega tarp. Don't mind me, just <sighs> trusting this rope of my life. And meanwhile, Mac and Coro were still in a hole. Oh my god, man. And eventually, they finally made it to the bottom. Hey! We're supposed to be working on fear. We just want to show how dangerous camp was. Just don't fall. It's a skill issue. Oh, okay. But even though they should have been on their way back, Paul and Mac insisted on seeing how deep they could go. Bro, this is just so crazy. You think you can make it through the river? these two know that this river actually runs throughout the entire cave, which means the will be spending some time. Oh, there they are. Ah, show me guys, coach. Are we cooked? That's right. <laughs> a new home, am I right? Let's go. We now have a roof with all this. I'm not going to lie, kind of cook. Can we move the fire pit to this little cove we found? What do you think? It's warmer, it's cozy. These rocks trap the heat here and block the pee from the rocks above. It's not pee. What, what, what would I call it? I don't know, maybe rain or something. It's not rain. It's raw. Rain, rain, rain. Wait up. Do you see clouds? No, you see rocks. It's not rain. Rock pee. Rock pee. Rock pee, fine. So I yeah. drop pee, and after a much drier night of sleep, we decided to have Joe, our survival expert, help us get all the way to the end of the cave. Cave! 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 Cave!
Yeah! Let's see how deep in the cave we can make it. Now, keep in mind that we are still just at the beginning of this massive cave. And our goal is to make it all the way through it. Without dying, of course. Oh my gosh, this is kind of steep. When you mention nothing yet, we're going deep in the cave. All right, boy, is sucking the gut. Your thing hit height. I don't actually think that would have been. The interesting part about cave exploration is one second, you're barely feeding through cracks in the rock. Like, ah, oh, there's a search iron. And then the next, you're in a massive chamber. So big that in order to see it all, we can't teach you this. Woo! Oh my god! I can actually see that. This is also the thing is right. Woo! Well, look at how cool that says. Yeah! Ah, uh, oh, so bright. I can't even look at it. How am I getting blinded? Oh no! Oh no! In hindsight, we probably didn't use that the most effectively. Lead the way. And so we continued on. Yo, Frey is a really good handle of the tide, eh? And you can sort of swing a full of ramen to this one. Like that? Uh, yeah, yeah, perfect. Yo, the best gaming guide ever. <laughs> no one's died yet. All right, guys, this is where things get interesting. What? What is that? So from this point on, we say we're gone for a swim. Yesterday, Mac and Carl were joking about doing this. But the rest of this cave adventure takes place in a freezing wheel. Oh my god, <laughs> The wetsuits are the only way to not get hypothermia. Why are we doing this? This is a once in a lifetime experience. How do I live or die? I'm playing the wet. So in order to get to the end of the cave, we have to hop in this river and fight the rapids with this tiny pool in the rock. We carefully squeeze our way through. Side gets on, I will take your thing behind you a little bit. I love getting in the river. Another pull and pull in the wall around the engine though. Oh. He got it, Jimmy. Uh, I don't know if I'm Jimmy, I need you to pull yourself up out of the water. Uh, What's crazy about doing this? So cold. It's when you're completely submerged in freezing cold water, ripping up to the rocks becomes incredibly hard. Uh, oh my gosh, that was crazy. Uh, Laurel, let's go. <laughs> Even though this obstacle was difficult, it's nothing compared to what's up ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're now 10% gone! Which means we've only scratched the surface of this expedition and we still have over 2 kilometers remaining to reach the end. As you can see, it rains on the skate tummy for 7 so I'll make it a chill spot for us to hang out in and not get wet. What would it look like if I wasn't here to build all this? Pretty sure they'd just be sitting on a pile on a wet rock. Oh no, we the Why is this so difficult? The worst part is, every inch we go this way, even inch we gotta go that way to get back to jail. Our next obstacle may be out of the water, but that doesn't make it any easier to get through. The bite on us, I'll spot it. That inch is probably on us. Ah, bite on, bite on. I hate my friends. But this game is like a Mr. B studio. The further you go, the harder it gets. Just straight up, if we didn't have Joe, I'd be dead. And after three hours, Joel had some bad news for us. Because we want to see how I am. We're taking so long. We're going to have to turn around for today. He met the camp. Mike disagree. You can't disagree with the safety expert. Mike disagree. Well, we can't really disagree. It turns out we wasted way too much time filming and playing with flares to the point where we now have to restart and attempt this mission another day. What did you do while we were gone? Hopefully nobody gets wet now. But I didn't even know we caught white. Yeah, they're awesome, right? Sadly, we only made it 20% through the cave today. But mark my words, we will go the distance in a future day. Alright, right, that's what I'm gonna have. Well, my rest on day four, and then on day five, try to go all the way to the end of the cave and see what's there. Mm, it was a lot of fun. I'll see you guys in my after a third of miserable night in the cave, the next morning we only had one thing in mind. A hot shower, but literally it saved my wife right now. Oh, the showering would be awesome. I haven't showered in three, four days, as you can imagine. Showering inside a cave is easy. We had to hike all the way back to where we were held in to safely reach the riverbed. <laughs> I feel my brain. I've never felt that brain like this. My forehead is full of spikes. Let's use the drone to dry our heads off. Come here, drone. Oh, man, stop, stop. It's actually working. Yeah, it is working. But it's a hair dryer when you have a drone. And after we dried off, we sat down with Joe to plan our journey. What is this, Joe? Because I'm a lamp of a gay. Last time, we had to stop because of the fast wearing water. But the rains have been slowing, so we might just get a window to reach the end by tomorrow. This is one of me wild. First, we'll need to pass some of those same rapids from yesterday. Dive off, man. 
smash some clubs and avoid jagged rocks. And if we can make it past all that, we will finally make it to the beautiful glow and chamber. Don't tell us what that looks like. And I want us to be surprised. Did you win a man gun? Oh. Nah, let's not play that game. We're all going to hide Tomorrow's player thoroughly mapped out. We rested up and made feastable spores to regain our energy. Come on, cheers. Yippee! Oh, Joe's about to have his oh, first piece of more. Hi, Joe, be honest. Joel Joe Bruins? Don't brave. I know we whipped the shots out earlier, but she's got like 10 times more fun. Guys, for real, if you've never tried sports with feastables, you're really missing out. Sapporo, we're gonna explore the entire cave. We'll see you guys then. So we tried to sleep as much as we could and prepare for tomorrow's journey to the end of the cave. We're about to embark on the most dangerous journeys of my life because of our experience from day three and focusing less on filming. We were able to make progress with ways faster. Did you find the other day, bro? Bye-bye. And to ensure our best chance of survival, in addition to Joe, we brought another survival expert with us. This is why we have to stop on D3. How we doing? We're making my skin a time. Behind us, it's pitch black. Where do we go? That's the area. It's narrow. I'm current strong. So we're going to use the walls and kind of find our way along? Yep, three more guys. Because we couldn't reach the ground, this meant that if we let go now, we can get swept away by the strong current directly beneath us. John, what do I do? Oh, you go inside here again, and I've got one. I can see where I'm going. Speaking of your way, you got it, you got it. See, it's up in the air, it's going to be a way, James. Are you going here? Yep. And no. This might be the most insane thing we've ever done. We are much deeper the caves than we've ever been. And we're now approaching our first series of By basically, the waters are circulating so they fall at a tight feet at the bottom and it keeps you there. If we fall, we will die. Yeah. I'll be some gappers on the table. Where this is just not what I thought I was signing up for. Hey, Look how strong this river is because it created this entire cave. And fuck fuck, we're not as strong as a thing. I'm barely as strong as a human. Well, fortunately for us, rather than Coral leading this expedition, we've got the literal of them, Joe. And just to prove how much of an expert he is, this man literally flexed on us by jumping off a cliff. Oh my god. Smell up the bank. Train me. You only want to eat like the cave? My guy, they. No shot. You ought to do that. What do you call bro? I'll put it right now. Baby, I'll tell it. Oh, God, speak back. After everything, dudes, pull me from. Just ain't that scary for me. Three, two, one. Yeah. Oh. Did you do it? No. We got to keep going or we won't hit the end. Oh, my God. Why are we always fighting the current? I might just start jumping away. I might just give it up. There are sharp rocks underneath the water. You cannot see none, so watch your steps. Oh my god, my well, it's getting deep again. I can't. I need to find my feet off. And if the shark drops, we're done enough of a challenge. It seems like with every step we took. Oh, I can't see anything. This is terrible. The case became darker. Tighter. And ruthless enough that we began to question if we could even get to the finish line. Oh. This was season. So awesome. This game is about your harder, and I have something I need to show of you. Joe cash you back. Thank you. You know what you mean, Jay? What about that guy? The brand new. Mr. B Slab Sore. I'll be honest, guys. As you can see, because of what I've been going through for the past five hours, I'm clearly in no shape to tell you about this right now. And so, a month after we filmed this, I built an entire cave set there on my future Jimmy name tag and then said, Hey, future Jimmy here. Now I'm gonna tell you about my brand new toy line of Mr. B Slab Sore. It's a collectible toy line with over 119 uniquely designed characters that you can collect. And the coolest part is to find out which character you got, you pour water into this tube, shake it up, and the Swords will appear in front of your very eyes. And to demonstrate the product, I made this giant life size version of the Swords tube. Fill the tube with water. You won't need this much water, this is just a, a giant tube. Right. And now that this is filled with water, perhaps you gotta give it a little shakeage. Uh, 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 it's a shake it off enough. I think you shake it off enough. Then you pour out the water to the honor soul. 
and out of the water, will be revealed which two swarms you got. This is the rarest one, the Hyper Crow, that only made a thousand of. Joel, you could have it. <laughs> you could have that one. Most power, I only have two. And we didn't just stop with the swarms, we also made these action figure panthers that are in these beast chases, and this mutator that just like the swarms has a really cool reveal when you buy it. But what about? I'm glad you asked. Mr. Beast Lab toys are now available everywhere in the world you buy toys. They're all out now. Go give them a try. And after more brutal trekking throughout the cave, we finally arrived at the Glowworm Chamber. Bet, this better be worth it. Alrighty, Sam. Welcome to the Glowworm Chamber. Holy crap, that is crazy. Man, this does not look like it's her. All of the lights you see here are actually created by tiny bioluminescent glowworms. That's how it looks like the Milky Way Galaxy. Ah. And this moment, this view, honestly, made that trip worth it. Well, making it to the glowworms was definitely worth the trip. Our journey was still not over because we had to go all the way back to base camp. It's almost day six. They're not back, and I'm exhausted. I don't know if I'll go to sleep, though. I'm just worried about them being gone so long. The trip back is way easier because they're just floating with the current. Now, because you guys have already seen the trip, we're going to expedite the way back. But seriously, this whole journey took so long. We crossed into day six before reaching camp. Yeah, yeah. What's up, guys? I was trying to get a worry. Happy day six. Day six, let's go. All we had energy to do was stop by the fire and finally eat some food. That was a very adventurous day. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Or later today. It is day six. Yeah, maybe today? I don't know. Despite being physically obliterated from our excruciatingly long hike, no matter what I did, I was really struggling to fall asleep. I spent seven days in solitary confinement, seven days buried alive, seven days on a raft, and I'm gonna be honest, I think this is harder than all of those. You're constantly soggy and cold. I just keep heating my body on these hard rocks and it hurts. 90% of the time this cave was miserable, but between me and you, those... Yeah, oh, you see me? That's the world's best class of There are moments of fun in this cave. Coffee wrapped, it's 300 feet on your bread up. For me and the boys laughing in our hammocks, <laughs> all the misery is worth it. Because when you're in good company, us me whale noises. This wet, cold, rocky, miserable cave can easily transform into the most beautiful trip of our lives. We cannot leave until everything is picked up. And when I say everything, I mean everything. Let's get out of here. And after our journey back to the mouth of the cave, oh, it looks so good up there. We had one more surprise for Joe. And before we head out, Joe has a show of gratitude. We got you 50,000 New Zealand dollars. So it's 10 grand for every human even let die. Oh gosh, thanks so much, Jim. Yeah, we got that out the way, we'll sleep. After seven long days.